Hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Updates 930 on May 26, 2024. Just to let you know, we're not going to be doing the week ahead or any long range stuff because we've got a lot going on. Uh, threats for our area tomorrow as well as what's going on right now in the Midwest. Uh, you can see looking at the satellite, you can see a pretty bunch of hefty thunderstorms popping up over, um, looks like, uh, Pennsylvania. Before I get there, though, I just want to show you again another view of last week's storms uh, that we had here. This was from Port Jefferson. Uh, just show you briefly the shelf cloud here coming in. Um, so, yeah, again, kind of missed out on it here. But this was, this was, again, last week's severe weather we had. This was a really nice shelf cloud they got over there at Port Jefferson coming in. Um, so you can see this is the storm coming in. That's what, that's what it looked like there. You can hear it, too. There was some thunder there, too, and some lightning. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a pretty nice shelf cloud. But we got a lot going on uh, across parts of the country. Uh, I want to go over yesterday's weather first, as far as our highs and lows yesterday. So we'll get that out of the way. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday turned out to be we had a lot of high clouds kind of coming into the sky yesterday. Um, uh, so it wasn't really as clear as it was on Friday. Um, but looking at uh, what we have here, you can see here that... Um, Yesterday we had cooler temperatures at the coast. Then we, you know, Suffolk was mainly in the low, low to mid 70s. Nassau County was more upper 70s. The city was around 80, uh, and then in Jersey also low 80s. It was more of an onshore flow yesterday, so it was cooler. Uh, and lows got down to the 50s, except for West Hampton, which radiated to 48. Um, and we'll go and get over our statistics now. And I believe I fixed the problem, so we had to. Um, had to delete some cookies to figure that out. So we'll go over yesterday's highs before we do today's. So here's yesterday's. Uh, and we had a 74 for a high at uh, Ice Lip, a low of 57. Uh, and that still 4 degrees above normal for the day. Um, Central Park yesterday was 81 and 66, high of 81 and a low of 66. And that was, they were 8 degrees above normal. Uh, so it was a little warmer, uh, except inland. It was still above normal, even though it felt cooler yesterday. Today uh, was cooler, but it definitely turned out to be a lot more humid out there. Uh, and that's where we've been dealing with this fog bank. Let's, where's the satellite image go? Um, go to the day. I think it's a little longer. We hit this fog bank along. You see this fog bank along the south shore right here. You can see it uh, right there. And that was dogging the South Shore. Even though we had sun and hazy sunshine with some cirrus around in the middle of the island in the North Shore, uh, on the South Shore, especially by the beach, they had this fog bank. And a lot of people were, you know, heading to the air show. And unfortunately, they, had a, they only got part of it in because the fog was just too thick for people to see. And it was a safety issue. So they had to uh, cancel the rest of it, unfortunately. You can see the fog here on the satellite. I'll show you pictures of what it looked like coming in. Uh, so you can see uh, this is what the fog looked like coming in. This is in the afternoon, well, more like 5 o'clock. Uh, you can see the fog coming in. It was still sunny, uh, but you can see the uh, the stratus clouds kind of coming in uh, over us. There's the sun through the set, the stratus there that we were, had coming in. And then within an hour, uh, we were fogged in uh, on the south shore, uh, even up by Wanto and Belmore. So... Um, yeah, the fog is rolled in, and they didn't predict this because it was a lot more humid. Today turned out to be a lot more humid than expected. Uh, so, of course, we're going to get to all that severe weather in just a moment. Uh, but um, you can see the humidity is very high today, so we're going to go look at Islip here. And 64 degrees, dew point 64. So, yeah, dew points in the 60s today uh, made for kind of a humid day. A lot more humid than, than we were anticipating, I guess. Whatever this frontal boundary that was coming through last night, that in the middle of the night that brought a, a couple of showers, um, was very, you know, it's just stuck loading again. Uh, it was very, very slow. Uh, so while we're waiting for that to load, we'll go look at our highs. And you can see highs today, generally Long Island was generally in the 70s, though Central Nassau got closer to 80, low 80s in the city. And mid 80s, if you were in Jersey, um, looking at the lows, lows generally were around 60 degrees on Long Island and mid 60s in the city, and well as Jersey also in the mid 60s. We're gonna gonna just try to reload this again and see what's going on. You know, I thought I fixed this. It's very annoying. Let's try it again. There we go. 
Uh, so uh, you can see the dew points are pretty high today, dew points in the 60s. During the afternoon, we had dew points as high as 68, so it was quite humid out there. And with the ocean temperatures still, you know, in the 50s, that's below the dew point, and that's why we, now we have these dense fog advisories in effect. Um, and you can see here that if we go look at a buoy, uh, let's see, uh, water temperature is, wow, it's up to 63 already. That's very warm, and it's only, like, May. That's very concerning. Um, let's see this one. Yeah, water temperature 64. Yeah, water temperatures are way above where they're supposed to be for this. We're supposed to still have water temperatures in the 50s. That's very concerning. Uh, I'm going to pick another buoy here. Uh, water temperature is 56 at this buoy, so it's a little cooler over there. Uh, but still, water temperatures are above normal. That's a big concern. Uh, and that's why they're talking about a very active hurricane season this year. No surprise. Um, but that'll have to wait for another night, all right? Um, let's just see how much rain fell in the past uh, 24 hours. As I know, some areas got a little bit, yeah, a little bit of rain, very little bit. But I guess that counts. We had officially had rain for a weekend in a row, even though it was only 0.01. It still counts as having measurable rainfall for, like, what, the 13th weekend now in a row? Or is it the 14th? I don't know. I've lost track. Um, just a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Um, so let's take this out and take a look at what's going on across, uh, because we have a lot of severe weather going on here. You can see the big area, severe thunderstorm watch, stretching from Pennsylvania all the way through uh, the mid-Atlantic, Virginia, parts of West Virginia, into the Carolinas. And then here we are with a huge tornado watch area. Uh, going through much of Missouri into Arkansas um, and uh, Kentucky, uh, as well as parts of Indiana, Illinois and Indiana, maybe a little bit there. Uh, mostly, it's mostly the southern part of Missouri, it looks like. Uh, they had a tornado warning uh, going through St. Louis, so we've got to talk about all this because this is what could be heading our way. Look at this. We have a, actually have an active tornado warning right now. Uh, I see a red box here. It's not showing tornado warning, but it's, it, this is a red box right here. Why isn't this showing? To there it is. Tornado warning in effect for southeastern Rappacock and I can't even pronounce that, northwestern Culper counties. Um, so we see that we have, a, and you can see some strong winds here with these thunderstorms. It's just warm, humid air um, and a big, another big storm ripping into it um, that's uh, causing this to happen. Um, let's, uh, so let's go and let's just look at the warnings that we have right now. Oh, geez, we have a lot of tornado warnings. Okay, so, uh, a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings and a bunch of tornado warnings here in, um, it looks like Kentucky into West, is that West Virginia? Or is that, um, Indiana, that's Southern Indiana. Uh, so we have a number of tornado warnings here, a number of them. Uh, and this is not good at all. So there's been a lot of severe weather throughout the day today. Uh, and it's been a huge, huge mess uh, across the Midwest. And it's caused a lot of problems, as you can imagine, with power outages. Take a look at this. So, um, yeah, look at all these states with power outages. Kentucky, hardest hit, uh, 145,000 people without power. Some counties almost in a complete outage. There's probably been a lot of damage to transmission lines again in these areas. That's what you see in the red. Um uh, that we have. So this is a really, really bad, really bad situation here uh, that we have in the Midwest. And, you know, normally I don't talk about other areas, but, um, yeah, we're seeing a lot of outages. Kentucky Utilities in particular seems to be having a lot of outages. And Perryville Electric, uh, let's go to Kentucky Utilities and see what, uh, what they have here. If they have any severe weather, let's see if they have any, uh, information on the Twitter as far as what kind of damage has occurred. Um, no image, no images yet. Uh, we'll probably have to wait until tomorrow to see that, but I'm sure it's been absolutely a huge, huge mess over there. But it's not just, it's not just Kentucky that's dealing with these outages. Missouri as well. Uh, look at these areas in the southeastern part of the county. Tremendous large amounts of uh, power outages here, very large power outages here. Again, probably damage to transmission lines in this area. Um, judging by just how significant that all those numbers are. Illinois has 30,000 out. 
as well. So it just kind of just shows you all the areas that were hit by all the severe weather today. Originally, they were saying yesterday was going to be more active. Today turned out to be the more active day. Ohio has some issues, too. Pennsylvania as well, 12,000 out, mainly in the western parts of the state, south, southwestern parts of the state uh, that are dealing with that. Um, West Virginia, 97,000. Oh, my gosh, look at West Virginia. Wow. This is really bad. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot of areas without uh, without power in West Virginia. Probably a lot of damage to the grid over there. Um, it doesn't look like, um, let's see, Cabell only has, so, so Cabell was spared. But as you head further into the other parts of the county, definitely a lot more, a lot, I mean, the state, a lot more power outages there. Virginia as well. I mean, these storms are just putting, uh, you know, a strain on all our, you know, utilities and all the, and think of all the linemen that have to fix all this stuff and how hard they have to work. You know, they deserve our appreciation and thanks. Um, North Carolina, 10,000. Tennessee, Texas still has 18,000. Kansas, and for some reason California has 10,000 now too. In one particular county there, it looks like they've had some stormy weather too, I guess. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, it's a big mess out there. Um, and let's uh, go look at the radars now. So I'm going to go to that because this is what's going on. And look at this. So we have actually have one lone severe thunderstorm right here. This looks like a severe thunderstorm. I'm surprised there isn't a warning on it. Is there a warning on it? There is not a warning on it. Um, the one lone severe, uh, this looks like a pretty strong thunderstorm. I see purple with hail in north central Massachusetts. Uh, we have a few isolated storms up in, in uh, New York. And then um, the miss is the line right here. That's coming through Pennsylvania. And this is the line we have to worry about for tomorrow. So you can see this line right here. Progression through here. Detroit, Pittsburgh. And there's a severe thunderstorm warning on this line. Uh, yeah, Culpera right here. Uh, this, this cell right here. Um, could have a tornado in it. Um, uh, and then we got more. It just goes all the way down. Here we are in North Carolina. Into... into into Tennessee, and then the other line with the t with the, which has more tornadic storms in it. This is now east of St. Louis that passed through St. Louis. Uh, this is a huge. This is a lot of uh, severe weather in this line as well. Um, we have a lot another area of thunderstorms over Chicago as well, um, and then another one over Iowa, and then more over Nebraska. Uh, you know, it's just unbelievable what's going on. It really is. All the severe weather. And this is all, like I said, heading toward our area. Uh, and that's what we have to be concerned about. Um, go back to the weather and hazards map so we can take a look at some of these areas here uh, where the tornado warnings are. I'm curious to take a look at St. Louis. Let me just lighten the shading a little bit so I can see these cities because otherwise it's so... It's so... Here's St. Louis. Let's see what what their peak wind gust was. 41. Okay, it's not terrible. Um, let's see. They had a peak wind gust of 43. Actually, this site has a peak wind gust of 48. North, northeast, at four, gusting to 48 now. Um, so these are the kind of winds you have. Straight line winds, but they're, like I said, tornadic winds could be in here as well. I think I heard read that it went to the southeast of uh, St. Louis. Uh, but still, we think these storms impact major cities and cause a lot of damage in them. Um, and uh, it's a really bad situation, all in all. Uh, let's see, all right, so this is the, the latest here. Tornadoes cause destruction across the south. 15, unfortunately, have died. Arkansas has dealt with, uh, dealt with a tornado. Um, and then we've also had bad, uh, tornadoes in Texas. Um, city in Denton. Um, this is what's going on. This is this is the consequence of living in a warmer world that we're dealing with here. So it's a huge, huge mess that's going on. And it's, go it's ongoing. Uh, so let's go to the Storm Prediction Center. And show that we've got that moderate risk that's sitting over uh, part of Kentucky, Missouri, 
And then that's surrounded by a enhanced risk. That's and then a slight risk. And then a uh, marginal risk. That goes all the way into Pennsylvania. Uh, the marginal risk right there that you see. Um, and if we go look at uh, reports here, look at this. 12 tornadoes reported, 446 reports of wind, and 196 reports of hail. So we go to the storm reports map, and you'll see, look at all these wind reports here that we have uh, in the blue. The red is tornado, uh, and you can see where there have been tornadoes. And then uh, there was even a tornado in, looks like, Wisconsin. Looks like just near the Illinois border there. And lots of reports of hail as well. Uh, with this as well so very very active situation that we have we can see looking at the weather map that we've got that warm front definitely passed the north of us that's why we have increased humidity today and this is what's going to be heading in our direction here for tomorrow that we've got to be concerned about all right uh, so we'll go to the storm prediction uh, center and we're going to go and look at day two and look at this they've put that slight risk pretty much all the way into New Jersey and uh, around that. We're in a marginal risk here on Long Island for severe weather tomorrow. Um, so uh, we have, uh, this, is, this is definitely worse than last week. It's more significant. Uh, and, I've, and, and some of the models are really showing, showing this as well. Um, uh, so let's go back to the satellite here, and I'm going to just go to the CONUS view here. So we can get a look at just the whole picture here that we got going on here. Here's your low pressure system there. And you can see, again, there's all those thunderstorms blowing up here. See, there's another wave right here. See that? All those thunderstorms blowing up. Look at all that smoke. Look at that smoke line, too, over Texas. Uh, that's pretty interesting right there. So you got all this smoke here. That's And we're gonna we're gonna we're we're getting into the smoke. And you know, it's a little bit of haze today. It's, it's, this air quality is probably going to be even worse tomorrow. Um, going to be very humid, very muggy, and uh, again, we have to watch for these thunderstorms. Over That's very interesting looking at that over Texas. I'm just going to shift this to the, let's go to the lightning one. I'm sure, you're going to have lots of lightning here popping up. Yeah, look at all that. Yeah, look at all that. That's incredible. That's a lot of lightning right there. That's a lot of lightning. So I'm going to go and go change this to the south. This we can do Southern Plains. Oh, this just shows Texas. I don't know why they should just say it Texas. But I just want to show that line. No, no, no. I want to show that line. Yeah, look at that. There's the smoke. Look at that. All that smoke. That's some pretty thick smoke over there. I'm surprised there aren't any air quality alerts in that part of Texas. No, I don't see any popping up over here. But, yeah, there's definitely some smoke in the air. Like, if you're in... Houston right now, you got to be dealing with some smoke, I'm sure. Um, haze being reported, six-mile visibility. So they are dealing with some wildfire smoke. That's all the way from Central America coming up into Texas. That's unbelievable. Um, but that's not, this isn't the satellite view of one. And there are the fires going on in New Mexico. we got two of them right there. Adding to it. Um, let's go to the south. We'll do... Southern Mississippi Valley, this might give us a better look at some of these storms and how they're blowing up. You can see how they're just blowing up. Look at that. Very, very powerful stuff. They look at how look at that. Wow, that's really powerful. As long as you wonder if the smoke is super charged. Look at that. That's explosive. Explosive development there. Um so we looked at all this stuff. Let's go into the Weather Prediction Center and move this to day two, which is tomorrow. You see that cold front getting closer to us, and that's what we're going to have to watch out for, our, our, our threat for severe weather. Um, so I'm just going to go over the statistics for today, the climate statistics, and then we're going to get into looking at our risk for severe weather. Uh, high of 75 and a low of 61 at ice slip today puts us 6 degrees above normal. Central Park... Uh, high of 82 and a low of 65, 8 degrees above normal. And I think Maine's going to be above normal. <laughs> All right. What do you think? I think so. So um, let's look at the models here. And you see this really powerful, this deep low here again that we're seeing. Um, and that low is going to move into the Great Lakes tomorrow. And then the cold front 
Look at those isobars getting bunched up ahead of that cold front right there. That cold front moves on through and uh, moves on through probably the later part of tomorrow into, uh, into the wee hours of Tuesday, and then it moves offshore, and we have a nicer day on Tuesday. But tomorrow, um, this is the concern, obviously, that we have these isobars really bunched. Look at that. That's tight. And there is a V there as well. You see it. So that means a sharp cold front with severe weather. Really, a good, I think we're going to see. A th I'll be surprised if they don't. Even, I think that we're going to be under severe thunderstorm watch for tomorrow, uh, considering what I'm seeing here. Um, and we'll have to look at tape and all that other stuff. Um, but there's a lot of, let's see, actually I can do this. We're going to look at the 850 winds as well with this as well. This kind of shows where the storms are. There isn't an LLJ per se, but you see this is showing where the storms are. Um, and there's a decent amount of moisture with this too. Let's uh, go to the uh, 700 to 300 here. There's a decent amount of moisture. It's a good chunk of moisture there coming. And then we get into the drier air Tuesday. Um, but that is a decent chunk of moisture there coming through. So you have a lot of parameters that are kind of going in to, and, and kind of coming together for something tomorrow. So uh, let's look at... I think I want to look at FGen as well. I don't normally do this, but let's go ahead and look at this. It's usually something I look at in winter, but I'm just kind of curious to see. Yeah, it's not that much of a it's not that useful of a tool for this type of deal. Um, this doesn't unfortunately display the cape. So let's go to the HRRR. We have the uh, HRRR here in, and we'll show what the HRRR does with the front. Obviously, it kind of weakens that line. Um, it doesn't really do much the early part of tomorrow, but then here we go and toward the afternoon. Here comes a line coming through. It's around four o'clock in the afternoon, going through New Jersey, and it looks like uh, that threat time from four to it looks like it's developing a pretty big cell right around 7 o'clock that could wind up clobbering us here, moving from southwest to northeast. Not really a direction that helps us here in Nassau, but again, we have that. We have all the humidity. We have plenty of humidity in the air um, for this. Um, and then as we go into Tuesday, the weather will improve. But again, we'll talk about Tuesday's weather more tomorrow. Um, because you see, this air is juiced up, man. Look at these dew points. It's pretty high. I mean, all the, the humidity you have today it will be with us tomorrow. Dew points in the mid-60s to perhaps as high as 70 degrees um, tomorrow. So it's going to be pretty humid. Uh, that's why we had the fog today. They weren't calling for it because the humidity is just higher. And so you have all this humidity here, the south wind. And then you see what happens as we head into Tuesday, that the wind shift to the west and the drier air starts coming in. So that's a big difference in uh, dew points, and that, that's what helps – uh, create the boundary for the lift for these thunderstorms. Temperatures tomorrow, obviously with the cloud cover, won't be as warm tomorrow as today. Uh, but it's still going to get warm over Jersey. Um, it's still showing 80s. We're going to have the marine layer here, so low clouds are probably going to keep the sun away, which would help stabilize the atmosphere. But we've seen that's not necessarily um, that's not necessarily a um, a, um, a you know going to protect you from it. You know, so, um, so, and then the temperatures kind of stay warm. And then Tuesday is still going to be pretty warm. Still going to be probably upper 70s for highs. So it won't be that much cooler behind this front, but the dew points will be lower. Um, but uh, this is definitely a, a good, uh, sharp type of situation. Now, let's go ahead and load 0Z and NAM in, and we don't really have enough of the 0Z NAM in. So let's go to the 18Z here, and we're going to go ahead and look at this as well. Going to use this, I think. Well, yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll use our usual. Um, so this is the radar simulation. All right. So our f that first light's over Pennsylvania. We get some of those remnants uh, in the morning tomorrow. Perhaps if they hold together. But this is the NAM here, and the NAM again develops something right in that again four to five o'clock, and it just seems like it blows it up over Long Island for whatever reason. Um, and that's, again, that looks like some pretty, those could be some pretty severe thunderstorms. It blows them up over Long Island. Um, that's what the NAM does anyway. And then it has another, oddly enough, into Tuesday, it tries to develop another line um, over New Jersey, and then it kind of fizzles by the time it gets here. I don't know if I'm buying the Tuesday thing, but um, definitely buying tomorrow because we have a lot of parameters that are being set up. Yes, the low is going into the Great Lakes, but... We don't necessarily need that low close by. We saw what happened last week 
all right? Uh, even though we missed out in Nassau, a lot of areas got hit very hard. Uh, and that could definitely happen again. Um, let's go to the, um, let's go to this one. This is like similar. I never understood the difference between this. This is instantaneous precipitate. And then you can see, but it looks pretty similar to the radar. All right, so you can see, look at that. That, that looks like a bad storm that comes in over Nassau. It just slams Nassau. Heads into Suffolk. Uh, that's the NAM. Uh, okay, we don't have the, the the latest run of the NAM, and only have out to this far. Um, um, we can look at a few other models, like the I don't think the FV3 is going to be. All right, let's look at the FV3 here. See what this one does. Yeah, this one only goes out to 18Z either. So you can see the threat is mainly going to be later in the day. All right, so as you toward the afternoon, you know, into the evening, that's when we're going to have to watch out for this. Um, HDRPS, which is another model we can use as well for tomorrow. Again, showing that threat. Um, um, it looks like it just, it seems like there's a trend to maybe have something form, whatever forms over the Jersey Shore, makes it across the ocean and hits uh, Long Island, perhaps, for uh, tomorrow night. Uh, as far as rainfall goes, uh, well, I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a, um, no, I don't want that, uh, rainfall. Total accumulate for sip. Um, it's it, it's going to be wherever you get hit, obviously. But wherever you get hit, these storms could put down perhaps one to two inches of rain. Um, so we could see some really heavy rain with these storms uh, possible, along with, you know, the threat for strong winds or lightning and uh, maybe, maybe even a tornado. I don't think we'll see any tornadic storms tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to go to this uh, thing again, SPC, and we can actually go over the tornado Tornado risk for tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow. So let's see. Oh, they have a particular... Um, overview. Oh, they had a products there. But man, I, I can't find it now. I don't know. I don't see. I guess they don't have... They're not showing one. Sometimes they specify tornado risk in here. I don't see it. Uh, but you can see wherever these storms hit. All right, that's the NAM. Let's go to the HRRR here. Rainfall. HRRR, not quite as much. Um, but it depends on wh who gets hit with these storms tomorrow. All right, it depends on who gets hit. Um, as far as skies go, uh, we'll have clouds around tomorrow. I think we're going to have a marine layer. Let's just look at the RGM here. I think it's going to show pretty much a marine layer. Yeah, we're going to have a marine layer. So clouds, could be some fog in the morning. Um, and then maybe, uh, I don't think we'll see any sun tomorrow, um, but it could try to brighten in the afternoon. It does try to brighten wherever the sun tries to get through where it's showing over New Jersey right now. That's where they're going to have the most threat for destabilizing the atmosphere. Um, and then by Tuesday, we clear it on out. But let's go to the, well, mostly. Um, let's go to the um, Ventus Sky model. I'm going to go to the Ventus Sky. Look at this. So here we go. We're going to go to the thunderstorm. I'm going to look at Cape. Move this into tomorrow. Starting in the morning, 8. It's mostly off to the west. Uh, still off to the west at 2. That marine layer keeping us safe. 5 o'clock, still keeping it off to the west. This is the H triple R here. And it doesn't bring any of the Cape into the area, it looks like. The H triple R seems to want to have... I don't know if I'm buying this at all. It's trying to have a marine layer protect us. I don't know if that's really going to happen. All right. um, I don't know if that's really going to happen. I have my doubt. Let me go to windy.com. We're going to use a different model here. Let's see if we're going to be protected by the marine layer. But again, looking at these dew points, you can see they're very high. Very humid conditions. Um, we have the thunderstorm. This is the general thunderstorm threat. I don't know what this, this parameter is. It kind of just shows you where thunderstorms will develop tomorrow. And you can see it's mostly over Jersey, but you can see it's got one around 6 o'clock. And then a really severe one around ele toward 11 o'clock. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty severe, this one right here. Very. Uh, cape. So there's a cape thing here. Where is it? I know I'm probably skipping past it somewhere. Where is it? 
So cape here. Oh, I think I know where I got it there. No, nope. should be here. Sorry about this. Yeah, I don't know. They don't have a cape. I thought I saw a cape thing here. I guess there wasn't. I thought I saw one. That's weird. Hold on a sec. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry about this. I thought we had another cape thing here. We don't. But I think that we're going to have a... Oh, there it is. I do apologize. It was right there. <laughs> Brain just sometimes does that. Um, so you can see the cape off to the west, but then it goes an hour early in the evening. So later in the evening, it might be a little more toward 10 or 11 o'clock, we're going to see some of this activity, but uh, I think we do have, uh, tomorrow's going to be an active weather day, I think, um, uh, so, uh, you know, what can I say, uh, stay tuned to your local weather service, and if there's any severe weather affects our area, um, uh, you know, I'll make posts about it, and hopefully, maybe I'll have a good storm to film, obviously, if I do, I won't be here, because I can't see Jack, Jack Squat from this prison, so, anyway, have a good night, thank you for watching.